everyone, lab two, question five. Let's take a look. Oh, snap, it's a go find it question. I know sometimes when people see these go find it questions, they just feel like they're lost in space or something. And I completely understand. In fact, I remember back when I was a student, uh, I had this friend, I won't name her, but she was like reading the self-help book. It was kind of like a cross between the secret and like, like potato soup for the soul, potato, chicken soup for the soul, right? What, Reader's Digest, what is the, I don't know, I'm unfamiliar, what is, anyhow, she was like, you know, on the way to the exam, just keep telling yourself that you're lovable, capable, and self-confident. I'm lovable, capable, and self-confident. Lovable, capable, and self-confident. So we tried this practice question out, a whole bunch of us in our set, really, and we were all telling ourselves we are lovable, capable, and self-confident, and we felt great and then did terribly on the lab question. Like just awful, like crash, burn, terrible, awful, not very good. So that's when I realized there's a couple ways you can go about learning this. You could have the intention of doing really well, or you could have the intention of doing well and then also take the time to learn it. So when you are faced with a go find it question, I recommend a few steps. Step one, reword the question or restate the question in your own words. Do you know what it is you are being asked to do? Step two, figure out if you need to go to the index or to the detailed table of sections. If the question looks like it involves defining a term, you might want to go straight to the index to look up the term. However, if the question is a bit more vague or more broad, you might need to go to the detailed table of sections where you have some idea of what the different subdivisions in division B are to help you find your answer. In other instances, you might be pointed directly to a provision. So you might just have to read the provision and pay close attention to words like and versus or. Finally, recall that sometimes you need to look at related provisions because one provision might not be enough. You might have to go from one provision to another provision in the Income Tax Act. And also look out for the word prescribed which means you should be looking at a regulation. Okay, with all that said, let's dive into it. Let's look at lab two, question five. Case A talks about Dan Lynch, who owns a successful pizza restaurant chain and has recently expanded his operations to a new location in Victoria, BC. Shortly after the new restaurant opened, Dan realized that the customer bathrooms were not accessible to disabled customers who are in wheelchairs. He quickly rectified this, but the renovations to the bathroom doors cost him $28,000, and he is hoping this amount is deductible for tax purposes. Citing all relevant authorities, advise Dan on whether or not this expense is deductible. So before we go further, step one, restate the question to yourself. Essentially, you have a taxpayer who is an individual that wants to know whether they can deduct a specific expense, that expense being a renovation to the business. Now, some of you will try to go straight to the index and look up the word bathroom. That is an interesting approach and you can try it. I don't think you'll find it in the index. You might find the word bathtub in the index, but that isn't the same thing. Others will look for the word renovations. Renovations, specifically disability related renovations, are noted as being deductible in section 20, subsection one, paragraph QQ. If you have some familiarity with the detailed table of sections and how everything is organized, this is great. Some of you at this point might know that section 20 resides in subdivision B, income or loss from a business or property. And section 20 is where the deductions for a business begins. So seeing the word deductible, disability related, for renovations under section 20, subsection 1, is a good sign. Go ahead and flip there. Now, before we read paragraph QQ, I'd want you to get all of the context right. So you should look at section 20, subsection 1. And what that says is deductions permitted in computing income from a business or property. It goes on to say in computing a taxpayer's income for a taxation year from a business or property, there may be deducted such of the following amounts as are wholly applicable to that source or such part of the following amounts as may reasonably be regarded as applicable here too. So the following amounts, paragraph A, B, and on and on it goes, 
are going to be deductible. And one of those following amounts is what we're looking for, paragraph QQ, disability related modifications to buildings. An amount paid by the taxpayer in the year for prescribed renovations or alterations to a building used by the taxpayer primarily for the purpose of gaining or producing income from the building or from a business that are made to enable individuals who have a mobility impairment to gain access to the building or to be mobile within it. So let's look at that carefully. You are allowed then to make a deduction provided it is made to enable individuals who have a mobility impairment. So it certainly sounds like this is going to work, but there was another key word here, the word prescribed renovations. So now the question is, we know that the taxpayer in this question made a renovation to enable an individual who has a mobility impairment to gain access to their building, but we don't know if it was a prescribed renovation. The word prescribed indicates we should look at a regulation. And if we look under the provision, we see related provisions, notes, and then the word regulations, and we are directed to regulation 8800. So why don't you take a moment and go to regulation 8800. And we can see under regulation 8800 that the renovations and alterations that are prescribed for the purposes of paragraph 21QQ of the act are and then you could read all of these. The ones that we are interested in is paragraph B, a modification to a bathroom, elevator, or doorway to accommodate its use by a person in a wheelchair. And if I recall correctly, the taxpayer made a modification to a bathroom. So now we're in a good position to try to answer this question. We could say, yes, the expense is deductible per ITA 20 subsection 1 paragraph QQ, which allows for prescribed modifications. And according to regulation, and now note here, when we use a regulation, we cannot cite it with ITA. That wouldn't be acceptable. We can use regulation. 8800, a modification to the bathroom is a prescribed modification. Another way you could have tried to answer that same question. If you were familiar with the detailed table of sections and division B, you know that division B is broken down into subdivisions. For example, subdivision A deals with income or loss from an office or employment you would know that subdivision B deals with income or loss from a business or property. And it begins with basic rules in section nine, inclusions in section 12, and deductions in section 18. Now, we really begin with what we cannot deduct in section 18, and then we arrive into what we are allowed to deduct, deductions permitted in computing income from a business or property in section 20. And what you could do is you could just go through each one of these, reading them all the way through. Until you eventually arrive at section 20, subsection one, paragraph QQ, disability related modifications to buildings. So that might be enough for you to go to that provision. And then you would have seen the wording prescribed renovations that would have taken you to regulation 8800. Let's take a look at question five, case B. Miss W has been awarded the Nobel Prize for Science, which she thinks may be non-taxable, but she is confused by the wording of 56 subsection one, paragraph N, which she thinks is the relevant provision. Provide one citation that together with 56 one N provides the authority on whether or not the Nobel Prize is taxable. Step one, do we even understand what we're being asked to do? Well, we are being asked to provide one citation and one citation only when used in conjunction or to use together with 561N will answer this question, right? It will be the authority. It will tell us whether or not this Nobel Prize is taxable. And the word taxable, well, the taxpayer wants to know, do they have to include this in, into income 
or does it not need to be included in income? Since we are given a specific provision, 56 subsection 1 paragraph N, I suggest we go there first. Now to have any hope of correctly understanding paragraph N, we need to first go to section 56 subsection 1 to get all of the context. And we can see in subdivision D is where we are now, other sources of income. 56 subsection 1 amounts to be included in income for the year. So without restricting the generality of section 3, there shall be included in computing the income of a taxpayer for a taxation year. In other words, you should include the following amounts, paragraph A, B, C, D. Let's go to paragraph N. 56 subsection 1 paragraph N. Scholarships, bursaries, etc. The amount, if any, by which. So remember, anything in section 56 subsection 1, all of the paragraphs that follow are to be included in income. Subparagraph I, the total of all amounts, other than amounts described in paragraph Q, amounts received in the course of business, and amounts received in respect of, in the course of, or by virtue of an office or employment, received by the taxpayer in the year, each of which is an amount received by the taxpayer as, or on account of, a scholarship, fellowship or bursary, or a prize for achievement in a field of endeavor, ordinarily carried on by the taxpayer, other than a prescribed prize. Now there's a few things for you to look at here. It's basically saying to include all scholarships, fellowships, or bursaries, or a prize for achievement. However, it also says other than amounts described in paragraph Q, or other than a prescribed prize. So now you have the option. Should you go look at paragraph Q, or a prescribed prize? Let's see if anything in the notes gives us a hint. The related provisions does not mention 56 subsection 1 paragraph Q. It mentions section 60 paragraph Q, but not what we're looking for there. The regulations does mention 7700 prescribed prize. Again, you have a choice now of where to go first. Because you are already here in section 56, I think it would be easiest to take a look at subsection 1, paragraph Q. And here we are, and it says Education Savings Plan Payments, amount in respect of a registered education savings plan required to be included in income for the year. So it says the total of all amounts other than amounts described in paragraph Q because the amounts described in paragraph Q are going to be included under paragraph Q. So now let's take a look to see if this Nobel Prize would be considered under a prescribed prize. And recall that that would be found under regulation. Here it says regulations, 7700 for a prescribed prize. Take a moment and go there. 7700 prescribed prize. For the purposes of subparagraph 56 1 N I of the Act, a prescribed prize is any prize that is recognized by the general public and is awarded for meritorious achievement in the arts, the sciences, or service to the public, but does not include any amount that can reasonably be regarded as having been received as compensation for services rendered or to be rendered. So now it depends on what you know about the Nobel Prize. Per 56.1n, it did say the taxpayer must include into income a prize for achievement in a field of endeavor other than a prescribed prize per regulation 7700 a prescribed prize is one that is recognized by the general public for meritorious achievement in the sciences Therefore, the Nobel Prize 
would be considered a prescribed prize. And prescribed prizes are not included in income. So a Nobel Prize would not be taxable based on what we read. Okay, everyone, I know that's really difficult. Keep practicing and eventually it'll get easier. Until next time, thanks for watching.